Stop! Before you buy any more seeds this season, we need to have a talk. Hey, it's Heather at Adventures in Gardening and today we're going to be talking about a lot of the plants that I grew from seed last year. And I'm going to give you the, my reviews of how they did here in my garden in Connecticut Zone 6. And there's going to be some good ones and there's going to be some bad ones. And my goal is really to help you decide what you want to try to grow from seed this year. So uh, strap on your roller skates because we're going to go kind of fast and there's a lot to cover. So let's get started. All right, so I've been thinking about this um, for a long time and, and kind of giving you my review on um, all of the seeds that I grew. Um, most of them I grew last year. Some of them I've been growing for years. Um, and really, you know, when it comes to seed starting, um, you know, each of us only have so much room in our garden and you want to make sure whatever you grow is going to be a success, right? So I garden here in Connecticut Zone 6, so um, you might have a different review of some of these plants. But um, so I'm going to give you the um, brutal honesty today, uh, of, and most of them are very good. So um, let's see where are we. And I actually had no idea how many how many things I grew from seed last year. Um, I think the best place to start is with tomatoes. And I am not going to give you a full review of tomatoes. Um, in fact, I, I've done some videos and I will link them above and down below so that you can see because there's, I think there's over 30 different varieties that I grow, but I will tell you, the, and every year I grow something, a few new ones, okay? I will tell you about the ones that I grew last year. Um, mostly good, and I wanna start with purple rain um, and so you will notice that a lot of my seed packs most of them are empty I just keep them as a point of reference um, most of my seed packs are going to be from Baker Creek and I am not doing a commercial for them it just so happens that uh, I just find they have definitely um, carved out a niche for themselves in the fact that if I only want one pack of seeds I can order one pack of seeds I can get it very quickly and I'm not going to pay any shipping so purple rain purple rain purple rain um, so man it uh, a dwarf uh, determinant or semi-determinant I'm actually not exactly sure what they're classifying this one as um, but fantastic it got to about four feet tall and I could not believe how many tomatoes I got off of this. So the, it, the, the problem is most determinate tomatoes, I will stake with one bamboo pole. This needed um, one of those T posts uh, or, or something. It needed something because it got so many tomatoes on it and they got so heavy. Um, I, they just, they came the entire season. I had them the entire season and I made a lot of sauce from this plant. I'm sure you could grow it in a container if you're interested, but it was, um, it reminded me of a beefsteak tomato and it was pretty and it was prolific. When I use that word, I mean it. Okay, where's the rest of the tomatoes? Oh, so I'll have to put pictures up. I left a little space for myself to put pictures up. Prairie Fire, I don't know where the seed packet is. So Prairie Fire, man. Oh, it was, um, so it is, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's indeterminate and it, um, it has these little sweet tasting tomatoes on it. It was definitely a winner. I highly recommend it. Very, very sweet. Okay, and sometimes that, that term, the, the sweet tomato, I don't think it's always used appropriately in the tomato growing world, okay? It's like your version of sweet's definitely different than mine. And this was definitely a sweet one and it was pretty as well. Um, kind of like they were like this big, okay? So they were um, single serving kind of tomato and got them the entire season. Next on the list is black strawberry and black strawberry was one of those controversial tomatoes, you know, and, um, and I can understand, you know, if you only have room to grow one cherry tomato in your garden and you picked black strawberry, um, it definitely wasn't sweet. Um, and it, early on, it was kind of on the mealier side. They were great for roasting. I love the color of it. Um, I thought it was a great tomato. So I would recommend it if you've got space, you know, I would grow that one specifically for roasting or throwing in as a different color in your salads. Um, but if you want a sweet cherry tomato, I don't think I'd pick black strawberry. Again, you might have a different opinion than me and I would love to hear about it. Okay, so uh, lettuce. 
I, uh, Marvel of Four Seasons is my all-time favorite lettuce. I grow it all the time, but I love this. This is um, strawberry cabbage lettuce. It's um, a sanguine type lettuce and it is soft and I don't know, it's got a buttery texture to it. I totally love it. I love the color of it. It is an early um, lettuce. It isn't something that's going to do well after the 4th of July, at least not for me, it didn't here. But um, yeah, I grew it super early, probably two different crops and it just, it looked pretty in the garden and it looked pretty on the plate, but it tasted fantastic. Um, I grew broccoli rob for the first time last year. I'm gonna try it again. I'm actually gonna sow it this week because yeah, it just, it would just bolted. You know, the way that spring happens for us here in Connecticut is it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, it's winter, 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 and then all of a sudden summer, right? And it gets, uh, you know, we have those 80 degree days really early on. Um, we Very rarely do we have a long, slow spring, it happens sometimes. Uh, broccoli Rob obviously does not like it here. But um, anyway, I'm gonna try it again this year. I just couldn't keep up, it just, it just went to flower super, super quick, and so, I will show you the picture one more time because I don't believe I have any other pictures of it. Okay. Okay, my all-time favorite cabbage, uh, Glory of Einkusen. Okay, this cabbage does very, very well in, in my zone, okay? And um, we have a lot of humidity that we deal with in, in the summertime. Um, I, may, I get enough cabbages out of this plant to uh, to make sauerkraut for a year as well as soups um, and it it sizes up, it heads up really really nice I've grown other cabbages and this by far is my favorite cabbage to grow so you know 24 30 heads of cabbage the whole season and when I got a second crop after I harvested the first head I got a second crop of of those so that was nice they were just smaller this carrot is for dummies, okay? Anybody can grow it. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, um, yeah, it doesn't matter what your soil is. This new Corota just it grows nice and straight. Um, I think it is a fantastic carrot and it's super sweet. And I start them uh, about the first week of April out in the garden. I, very rarely do I direct sow anything, okay? But carrots, I do direct sow the carrots. Everything else, everything else I start because I need the control, okay? We've got critters outside that are working against me and I need the control. Okay, my favorite um, snow pea. Is this focusing right? I hope so. All right. So this is called Green Beauty. It has pink flowers to it. I love, I've been growing this for years. When was the first time I bought this pack anyway? Uh, this is packed in 2019. So I started growing this in 2019. And the thing I love about it is it doesn't even matter if it um, gets old on the vine and swells up. Um, and gets that crinkle to it, you can still eat the entire thing, pot and all, okay? That is a nice snow pea. It's not tough. Um, and of course, you can cut them up and stir fry them, but we mostly eat these raw. I love this. You're gonna hear me say that so many times and be like, yeah, she loves everything. <laughs> I love everything on the table here, okay? Um, so I definitely recommend that. They get, what, 10, 12 feet tall, very tall, okay. Speaking of very tall, this is Tall Telephone. Look, a different pack. This is from Hudson Valley Seed Company. They were the only guys out there that had Tall Telephone. This is a shelling pea. I have a, a weird relationship with, she with, with shelling peas, okay? Um, I'm gonna continue to grow them, but I think last year I, what did I do? Like, oh, I don't know, 60 plants, 70 plants, 75 plants. Um, they, I had one big crop. I spent an entire afternoon, you know, shelling them. And then I had eight cups and then, <laughs> yeah. So not a lot. I did can them. I don't know if I want to do that again. I think instead we're just going to eat them fresh. It's going to be one of those things that, you know, I'll have a party, I'll put them in the center of the table and then everybody can just open them. Very, very sweet. They're very sweet. They're very tall. Um, they held up well during like an early heat wave. So I like that about a pea. 
So I'll continue to grow those. Cauliflower Robert. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, am I doing them again? I don't know if I'm doing them again. And that's just because of where I live, okay? Um, the heads never got super big. I think we had like three meals out of maybe eight plants, eight or nine plants. It was fun to grow, it takes up a lot of space. If you're trying to get a lot of food out of a small space, probably not. You probably don't want to grow cauliflower. Let somebody else grow cauliflower and then buy it from them. A great idea. Um, so I hope I have my onions on the table here. I did not see those. Okay, I guess I'm just going to talk about my onions. My onions, globo, globo, globo. Yeah, oh my gosh, I love that onion. And um, they size up really well and they keep a really long time. Uh, it's G-L-O-B-O, -O. and um, yeah, no, I still have them. They're still do going strong in my storage. Here we are uh, into the new year. So I like that one, and I've grown other onions. I've done the red ones. I did the little, you know, the little short squat ones. I'm like, oh, don't waste my time, okay? Uh, leeks. Leeks, um, will I do them again? Yeah, I think I am going to do them again. Um, our, our schedule got so busy later in the fall, like... October-ish that I think that they, um, I, I waited too long to harvest them. I should have, um, I should have harvested them a long time ago. And I think I could do a lot more of these. So I probably will. And I have a lot of seeds left too. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to try those again. All right. So this is actually, was actually supposed to be new for, um, for 2023 as a plant for me, but I, I buy seeds the entire year. I just get a whim in my head and I'm like, hey, I want to do that right now. And then that, that's why I love to order them for Baker Creek because I'm like, I just need one pack of seeds. I need it right now. <laughs> and so this is Lemoncello Lemon Balm and I love Lemon Balm. Lemon Balm is a useful plant. I like it in tea. Um, you can make tinctures out of it. And um, so these are perennial, hardy to zone six here, okay? Um, I have little tiny itty bitty babies out in the garden right now. And uh, so I'm looking forward to, to harvesting them this year, but the, the fragrance when you crush the leaves, oh mama, they were, it was just fantastic. If you like lemon, um, more so than the regular lemon balm. And the, the leaves felt a little sturdier. Mm, does that make sense? Mm, to me it does. They were not as fragile. Okay, um, you probably are, are tired of hearing me talk about this. Uh, zucchini rampicante. And um, I love it because it is uh, one of those um, zucchini that it outran the squash bugs, the vine borer, the... the um, the Mexican bean beetle, I mean, they were there. They were like, yeah, because it was a forest. I did two plants. You've seen the video. Have you seen the video? The video. I'll put the video somewhere. Unbelievable. I just cannot believe because I, I have to tell you, my experience with zucchini is you better have an, an up and coming um, uh, crop because that vine borer, man, I've been like a crazy person in the backyard just, you know, trying to catch the the moth lar the stage, <laughs> you know, trying, cause you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, it can't get away. Um, yeah, they'll take down a plant in a couple of days. So uh, anyway, zucchini rampicante is like, ha ha ha, you cannot get me because they keep rooting in the whole way on the vine. You can eat them when they are young and green and you can let them mature until they are like four feet tall. And um, then they become good storing um, squash. And yeah, so I got a bunch of them still storing um, it's a, it's a fantastic plant. If you have space, if you have space, zucchini rampicante. There are many peppers that I grew last year and every year I grow many peppers. Um, I don't want to talk about all of them today because we got stuff. We got stuff to cover, you know, all of the, the new and weird things that I've grown. Uh, but I do want to talk about this one right here. This is mini bell pepper. Now, if you've got kids and, um, it's a fun, here comes the sun. Oh, hello, sun. If you've got kids, this is a fun little pepper plant. Um, if you want to eat a pepper, this is not the pepper for you. It's not the pepper for me. My sister loves them, and she's gonna wanna she's gonna wanna arm wrestle over this. Okay, so we are probably gonna wrestle. Um, she loves this because 
I'm not sure why, but it's too seedy for me, okay? There's not enough actual pepper here. So you want to pepper Cubanelle, Laysa, um, you know, any of the bell peppers, um, you know, the Mira pepper, super early. I love Mira pepper. I don't know if, I don't even know if you can buy Mira peppers anymore, but I've got the seeds. So I grow them every year. They're early. I think that's why a lot of people like this one because it is a little bit early. Is it a little earlier? It says, mm, just says abundant. Um, it was fun. It was colorful. Kids like them. Ashwagandha. I love fruition seeds, by the way. I, I do buy quite a few things from them. Uh, we don't have a long enough season here. It, I tried. You can probably overwinter it inside. Um, you know, as a house plant, you want to use the two-year-old roots. That's my understanding. Never made it that far, okay? Um, there are uh, those little pill bugs that are basically never bother anything. Well, I don't know why they like this. They like the foliage and they're all over it, at least here. Um, fun. Okay, everybody, you know, is the ashwagandha. Everybody's taken ashwagandha as an herb and it's fun to grow. I won't be growing it again. So any questions on that, you know, ask me a question because if I didn't give you enough information, I've grown it two years, I got berries each time from them. We made it to that point and then I'm like, yep, bye. <laughs> All right, my favorite turnips in the entire world. I just didn't have enough of them last year. I love this turnip. How do you say it? You can say it. Okay, um, I like the color in the garden late in the season uh, never has failed me i start them the um the first second week of july for fall crop never a spring crop every time i've done a spring crop here it goes straight to seed we never see an actual little purple bulb but they are faithful in the fall time this edirn striped eggplant i'm going to continue to grow this one i really like it I like the color in the garden. I like the, um, the way the, the fruits of the eggplant taste. And uh, my only complaint is I always tend to start them a little later than I, than I should because yeah, we've still got fruits like trying to struggle to mature into the frost. So um, it's one I will continue. Anybody else has an eggplant that they love, I would love to hear it because uh, I just like the color. I'll be honest, it's pretty. It's a pretty one. And it's, and it's just eggplant. Uh, zucchini Nimba is my um, go-to zucchini for, um, you know, the little, <clears throat> excuse me, for the bush. Zucchini uh, grows very quickly and it's an early one. So you get fruits really early and then the squash vine borers are like, hey, over there. <laughs> and then it's done. So you got to have some coming up right behind it. At, at least for me, it's, it's, it's the circle of life. <clears throat> um, so it's uh, creamy. It's uh, even when it gets big, it's still edible. Um, I, I like it. I like it because it's early. That's why I like it. But it is, it's kind of creamy and soft. It doesn't have a thick skin to it. And I'm like all over the place here. Okay, so I love this. Um, it looks just like a watermelon radish. It probably is a watermelon radish. Uh, again, never in the spring. Always in the fall because every time I do them in the spring, it just bolts and then I've got seed. I can grow a really good crop of seeds. Um, but so first, second week of, of July, I start them. And by the way, I do start these in cell packs. I start them in uh, three per per cell, and then I transfer them immediately to the garden. It just helps. Um, it helps the survivability of all the critters that want to kill all of the things in my garden. What is this? Oh, are we talking about? Nope, we're not talking about that yet. All right, let's talk about cucumbers. So cu cucumbers, my go-to market more seventy-six. Uh, and these are these are my saved seeds right here. I have to tell you that I've grown a lot of different cucumbers and this by far is the most versatile cucumber. You can pickle it, you can eat it um, straight from the garden fresh, you can do anything with it. You know, you're always trying different cucumbers but I always have Market More 76 and it is prolific. Like you can't keep up. If, if you do them as an early crop and they get going, you can't keep up. Um, I am a sucker for somebody that says, Oh, hey, this is the best pickling uh, cucumber around. Um, and I did, it, and we had a lot of them, all right? 
tough skin. So as a pickle, yeah, I hold up in the jar. We probably should talk about processing time because um, I don't really have a problem with my pickles disintegrating in, in the jar or getting too soft in the jar. I mean, yeah, if you let it you know, five years down the road and it's still sitting in the jar, yeah, it's gonna be mush. Um, I did an entire year of um, these as pickles and um, very comparable. Okay, they are very comparable, except this one was a more pleasant pickle. Okay, again, Market More 76 I would go back to. So I'm not growing these, I'm growing Market More 76 and I'm probably gonna do Boston Pickler because I like Boston Pickler. And it's kind of just one of those go-to, uh, you know, little short pickles. And I, I usually eat those fresh. So those are my cucumbers. Oh, cucumelon, cucumelon, mouse melon, um, whatever you wanna call it, the cutesy little, Novelty. I mean, people really love that plant. I sell quite a few of them every year. Um, it is like a lemony cucumber and they are tiny, tiny, tiny. They look great on a um, charcuterie board, you know, something different. Uh, are they a main staple of food? No, they're more of a novelty for me, but I grow them every year anyway because people like them. Kids like them. People like the name too. All right. Oh, sunshine, sunshine. Okay, we need to give this a minute, huh? All right. I think I can go on with this kind of sunshine. I'm looking, I, looking at all those clouds up there and the sun comes right through. That's okay. All right, so let's talk about artichokes. I thought, um, I thought I could try to grow artichokes. I thought I could try to grow artichokes and um, plant them really early, grow them inside, and um, trick them into thinking they've been through a winter, right? Easy to do for me here, um, and then plant them outside. I, this just took up a lot of space, and um, yeah, I got little artichokes that formed on them, and then the frost came and then it was all over. So um, I'm probably not going to try these again. If you've tried any other variety and have done well, let me know. Or if you've done them differently, let me know. But I started them like last January. So yeah, and I kept them under lights for a little while. But yeah, bad experience with that. You know, when you only have so much room in the garden, you wanna make sure that, um, you know, that you get a good return, right? For your, for your energies. Let's talk beans. Okay. Uh, jade beans. All right. Jade beans are uh, wonderful, uh, crisp, um, uh, really, I don't know, they, they're strong green beans. Um, even when they get a bit, little bit bigger and before, you know, you can let them stay on the plant a little bit before they get that, you know, that bulginess to them. And they, even then they, they were still pretty good. The problem is there wasn't enough of them. All right. Um, I like the color of it, uh, and the flavor, but if you want a lot of beans, then contender and provider are definitely going to give you a lot more. I'm going to try them one more time. This was like year three of trying them. So I will definitely give them one more try because I've got some beans still in here. So I might change my mind about them. Um, this was a, a new one uh, last year, Dragon Tongue. And um, here's what I've got to say about it. It was a nice bean and it was early. It was so it was super quick. The, um, the spring crop did fantastic. I tried to do a later crop, not so much. Didn't like the heat didn't like the humidity, didn't like the drought. It didn't like something, maybe didn't like me. I don't know. They were pretty. The longer they stayed on the plant, the more faded the color became on them. So uh, I'm definitely gonna do them again. I have a bunch more saved seeds as well as a few left over from last year. So, and it was fun and it's pretty and it's, you know, something new, but something that I've been doing over and over and over again is Blau Hild, and they are a pole bean. I did, uh, I've always done Blau Hild, Blau Hild as a, uh, a later crop, all right? So after I've taken the peas out, I would bring in this, this plant right here. Last year, I tried to do it as a spring crop and a fall crop. So fall meaning starting in July, and it, I have to say that fall crop still 
far surpass the spring crop. So um, I'll probably just do, you know, the bush beans in the spring and the blauhild in the fall. This has a, to me, it has that kind of, um, it has a sweetness to it, this bean does. It has good color. Yes, when you cook it, it, it turns a different color. Um, I did pickle them. They, they did very well as dilly beans. Um, here comes the sun again, but I'm going to keep going. Uh, uh, it has like a van hint of vanilla. I, I, I had a friend over and I'm like, it kind of reminds me of cream soda. And he took a bite and he's like, your idea, my idea of cream soda are two different things. <laughs> so, but, you know. I think it does anyway. So I highly recommend Blauhild. Let's talk basil. Cannot do better than Genovese basil, all right? And, um, but yet I always try other things. Yes, I like Thai basil. I like it because the pollinator, pollinators like Thai basil. And yes, I'll use it, you know, somewhat. But this is the one that I use all the time. I tried this for two years. Uh-uh, no, I'm not doing this again. I don't know who said that. <laughs> yeah, I know, technically, scientifically, it is a basil. It's skunky. This is, <laughs> I'm like, wow, who is eating this? Who is using this? I don't know. If somebody out there likes it, maybe I did something wrong. I actually thought the first year I did something wrong. I'm like, this cannot possibly be. <laughs> so, Noonan basil is not on my list for this year. Um, and anyway. If you love it, I would love to hear about it. Let's talk melons. I did the Kajari melon, the, the cult-like following of Kajari. I'm like, I got to try this, right? <clears throat> this does not taste like a melon. <laughs> this tastes like a cucumber. I don't know what to tell you. If you've grown Kajari and you grew them sweet, maybe your soil is better than mine. As my sister and I are like, I don't know. What's wrong with us? I don't know, but uh, it smelled sweet. It really did. It smelled like a cantaloupe. Um, and I thought, oh, I've hit the jackpot because I had quite a few of them. And I just ended up, you know, feeding them all to the chickens because, yeah, I just didn't like it. All right, now we're going to transition into flowers. All right, I don't know why I don't have the seed packet still, but I've got lots of pictures. It is the um, Tip Top Alaskan Fancy no, tip top Alaskan nasturtium, salmon nasturtium, something like that. Okay, anyway, this is nasturtium. The color, I love nasturtium and I always do a lot of nasturtium. And I do them in different places so that I can keep the, the seed pure. Um, I, I love the variegation. I loved the, um, the, the, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like, it was salmon. Yes, that's what it was. It was salmon. They named it appropriately. Um, great color, looked great in the garden, looked great the entire season. I highly recommend um, buying nasturtium, saving your seeds because you can, I never, those packs never have enough nasturtium in them. So um, tip top, salmon, Alaska nasturtium. Hoppy red amaranth. Okay, this is um, fun and uh, tall. The birds love it. The chickens love it. It is um, the great color, dark, dark, dark burgundy color leaves in, in the garden. Um, gets very, 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 very tall and with a big plume on it. Um, fun and yet it is also used by the critters. <clears throat> portulaca. I mean, you can buy portulaca anywhere, right? Um, but I can grow it really, really early um, with a little bit of protection here. And um, so I'll probably start, I think they're on my calendar for February and I'll be growing portulaca. And uh, they're fun to have, uh, to grow from seed. If you have a place that isn't in the garden and isn't in your, um, your way where you can have the up and coming crops, portulaca are great for that. Because if something from, from your spring crop, like your, your pansies or whatever, start to look not so great and you just want to pop something else in, you got to back up all the time. So it was um, easy to grow and easy to, easy to sow and easy to grow. And there were plenty of them. Now I really had fun growing this and um, I grew way too many of them. 
and nobody wanted to buy them, so I planted them all. And um, I, try, I tried drying them. I did dry a few of them in a celosia, um, three to four feet tall, I believe is what we got. It was a great um, accent plant in bouquets. It is not the star of the show. It definitely ended up being a little bit paler than the picture here. And um, here's what I have to say. You would not believe the seeds that fell in my garden when I was ripping these out. I mean, if they all germinate, there's going to be a big problem out there. But um, I will grow them again. I will only grow a couple of them because, like I said, they're a great accent plant for bouquets. Spotted Bee Balm. This is gorgeous. It is a perennial. I've got it growing in a couple of different places. I love the foliage. I love the flowers and the pollinators. Love it too. So, um, you know, you grow perennials from seed. You're going to start them a lot earlier than you would, um, you know, your annual type things. But if you have some space under lights or in a very, 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 very sunny window, Okay, we'll talk about seed starting another day um, so that you don't waste your time because a lot of people waste their time with seed starting because either A, they start them too early without a backup plan of where they're going to go when they are germinated or, um, or B, I don't even remember what B is at this point. Now B is a... <laughs> uh, B is a starting too early or... Yeah, I don't know. You don't have enough sun. You don't have a... Yeah. You don't have enough sun to support your seedlings. Well, that, we'll talk about it another day. Okay. All right, zinnias. I grow a lot of different zinnias. Oh, somebody's trying to call me. Hmm. All right, I'm back. Um, my kids locked themselves out of the house, and it was mama to the rescue. So I don't know where we were. Oh, I think I think we were talking about zinnias. Okay. Let's let's start with zinnias. I grow quite a few different varieties of zinnias every year. Um, the cut and come again, the state fair, um, you know, and some fun ones. Um, this is one that I've done uh, a few times now. I really like this one because it's um, it's tough. It's a tough little plant, and it acts like um, I don't know, like a marigold or a sunflower. Um, it stays very short. It'll um, it'll branch out. Okay, not like a sunflower at all, but. Um, like a marigold and they're great in cut as cut flowers too. They're tiny. They're tiny tiny little things. Um, so the Persian carpet zinnias, I like that one. Nigella is something that you can start really early and oh what fun I had with Nigella last year. Most of the ones that I got from this seed pack were blue. Blue in the garden is a, a kind of a unique color. Um, in bouquets though, I found so many things when the nigella was at its peak, um, which was probably June, I think. Um, I found so many things to combine it with. It was fun. It was even fun after the blooms went by. They say that when you do uh, nigella that you should um, uh, not uh, disturb its roots after uh, when you transplant it. So you're supposed to direct sow it. Um, I didn't do that. I just um, put them in peat pots and then I just peeled the peat pots away and I dug the hole. And now they self sowed a second like little uh, crop in the fall, which I don't know if they're making it through the winter, probably not. But I can bet you that there are some seeds that will come up this spring and it was fun. So I recommend trying nigella. It's different. It's fun and um, great cut flower. Okay, I love this sweet pea and the fragrance. It was just divine. Um, and it was pretty. It looked just like this. Okay, not all the time you're going to see them look just like the, the cover of the seed packs. They got tall. They were scrawny. Okay, I will say that because I just did one plant each on either side of the greenhouse door. So I'll probably do a few more this year. Um, it was over, you know, mid-season, so you have to have something that's going to uh, take its place. So, I did this snapdragon from seed last year, and it's really pretty, right, on the picture, and it was really pretty in person, too. It was pinky pink pink, and there was a lot of them. I had a lot of snapdragons, because I had big plans. I was going to use it in arrangements. Ugh. 
pinky pink, baby pink. Okay, um, I saved seeds from one like little rebel, like coppery color. We'll see what happens this year. I'm totally growing snapdragons again because they're reliable. But um, I didn't, I just didn't appreciate this pink color because uh, it was still blooming well into the fall and it was pinky pink, pink, pink. Okay. Um, stock is something that I grew super, super early and I loved it. Oh, that musky, cinnamony, I don't even know how to describe it, stock. That's what it was. So you start them super early, as early as you possibly can. Any of you out there that do not have a greenhouse but you want to do that, what are they calling it? The winter seed sowing? The, in milk jugs, this would be like the perfect thing to put in the milk jugs, okay? Get them started out really early and then transplant them. Um, they got tall. They were very full. They were far prettier than this drawing, for sure. I totally loved the stock. It, it made me happy. <laughs> borage. I love borage. The bees love borage. I mean, mmm, just humming all over it. I love the fact that I like to grab kids when they're early and get them into gardening. And um, borage is one of those things because you don't expect it to taste like cucumber, okay? And you can eat the flowers. Kids really like that. Now, yes, I'm careful with kids and telling them what to eat. They're usually my kids. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, borage self sows it'll be exactly where I put it next year but I don't know if I want it there you got to give borage a lot of space and you got to use like a peony ring or something because it tends to flop later in the season so that's the only thing I have to say about that but I do love to grow borage um, you got to give it space though all right so these are the moonflowers the moonflowers are fun I I will always grow them. There's no seeds in here. Did anybody order seeds? Mm. <laughs> I can't save seeds for moonflowers. They just don't seem to get to that point and, and have the seed uh, ripened in time. My sister and I both tried. She may have some seeds. I'll have to ask her. But I've tried in the last few years to, to save my own seeds and it just didn't work out. You know what I'm talking about? Like the seeds just didn't ripen enough um, to get to that point, mature, where you can save them by the end of the season. And then the frost came and then it's all over. I think we're coming down the home stretch with um, this chamomile. Now, I will not need to plant this chamomile. Um, Lottie Lons, larger flower than the, is it the German? Is this Polish? Uh, yeah, this is the Polish variety. And I think, the, you know, the traditional one is the German variety, um, which is a little bit smaller. And, um, I love the smell of chamomile. I love fresh chamomile. I like to make the tea. These flowers are larger than the other varieties and they self sell like, like crazy. So I'll just grow them for other people this year. All right, so I hope that you found this helpful in your planning or your seed buying. I mean, it's fun to buy seeds, right? But then you got to start them and then you got to have a place to put them and then you want them to be successful. Um, you know, if you have a different opinion on any of the things I talked about today, I would love to hear that because, you know, maybe I always like to give things three years before I'm like, I don't like you, you know? Um, so, but you know, maybe it's your soil. Maybe it's your, definitely, uh, if you live in a different climate, you're going to have a different experience. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have some new seeds that are still in boxes, still in envelopes, still unopened, and we're going to open them live together next week. Live, hmm, recorded. It'll be a surprise for me. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be fun. So um, let me know if you have any questions about the things um, from uh, this past year. And uh, seed starting season is going to be here before you know it. So uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed spending time with me today. And subscribe so you don't miss out on the next adventure in gardening. I'll see you soon.